Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to our latest online virtual educator tour. My name is Ricky Hill, and I'm an e-recruiter and engagement specialist here at the University of California, Merced. We are so thrilled that you're taking time out of your day to join us for this live event. As you saw, you did have a poll there just for a moment pop up. So thank you so much for joining us and, and uh, replying to those questions. Once again, the, today's event is the Virtual Educator Tour Series. Today, we will be focusing on UROC, which stands for Undergraduate Research Opportunities. So we are thrilled that you could join us. And at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and get things started by handing it over to my colleague, Jorge. With just a quick reminder, we also do have a couple of admissions staff joining us behind the scenes who will also be asking or answering questions for you today, just behind the scenes. So you can use the Q&A button at the lower portion of your screen to go ahead and send those in. At this time, Jorge, the show is yours. Hello, everyone. My name is Jorge Royal. I'm the director of our Undergraduate Research Opportunity Center at UC Merced. Um, a little bit about me, I've been working at East Merced a little over seven years, um, Central Valley native, so I grew up in the area, um, originally from Los Palos, California, um, so very aware of the needs for opportunities for our students and definitely our student population at East Merced. Um, so our office um, overall, as you'll see on our website, is really focused on undergraduate research opportunities, um, and that expands every discipline now. Um, I'm going to talk today a little about the overall research at East Merced and opportunities as a little more specific and then a little more specifically into the opportunities that our office provides, as well as ongoing development for grad students um, and for students to apply to graduate school in the future. Um, so one of the things I wanted to make sure I'm clear about, our website has a lot of the information I'm going to cover today. I will share links as well as after this, um, I believe admissions will also share that with um, all of the attendees. So you'll have all the links I'll go over today. Um, if you're not able to access them because you're on the phone or you just don't have the capacity right now, you will get these links later. Um, but I feel it's helpful for me to talk as you also have the opportunity to click through the website. Um, so we've done a better job in this virtual environment to try to have everything available um, that we usually would put into a slideshow presentation. Um, so today I am going to um, share my screen it's all website, um, website pages. And then I will pause throughout. So if there's questions, feel free to ask them either in the Q&A um, chat, or um, if you want to come on later, admissions folks that are on the, the meeting today can also um, open up so that you can ask uh, live questions. Um, so to begin, <laughs> I tend to talk a little fast, so I apologize in advance. If there's any questions, feel free to stop me. Um, but our office um, really focuses on the undergraduate research experience in preparation for graduate school. So when we're really looking at um, our programs and what we focus on, it's the next steps for students. So at the undergraduate level, um, all students are encouraged to participate in research. It really depends on what type of research they're interested in and the time that they're at Eastern Merced. So our office focuses on rising juniors and seniors. So what does that typically mean? It means a traditional like entry student who comes in as a first year, um, and plans on being at UC Merced in four years, potentially five. Um, this is in their second year that they would be looking at our programs. It's the ideal timeline for when they would be accessing research to really be prepared and get enough experience before going on to graduate school. For transfer students, that means in their first semester, right when they get started, they should be reaching out to our office. We've done a, um, a great job of targeting uh, transfer and reentry students um, to make sure that we're we're targeting them to get the information quickly. Um, but that kind of is the context of what I'm going to be talking about research. There are a lot of opportunities for students, particularly at Eastern Merced, to be in research, those volunteering, academic based, like in their courses, as well as research programs that are beyond my office. Um, the other emphasis is really on the summer. Um, so, what I'll talk about with our programs, it's in the context of summer and thinking about the long term timeline for students is they usually are still conducting research outside of my programs during the academic year in those other options. Um, so that's kind of the overview of like our office and what I'm talking about today. Um, you'll see on this first page, there's a couple of slides and pictures going through. Um, it gives you an idea of the students and what they do with our office, um, as well as some of the outcomes that we hope to get. Um, this is our mission and some of the description of what we have available um, and what our real emphasis on um, the student experience particularly for underrepresented minority, uh, first-generation college student, low-income, 
um, the populations that we know we need to support more to get through to graduate school and to the future careers. Some of this um, started with some federal funding. Um, our office originally started with STEM focused programming and research access. We've now expanded that at UCMR said to all disciplines. So students that are in um, you know, economics, management, business, um, cognitive science, like everything is expanded. It's not just for the traditional biology wet lab bench experience um, that people have this assumption about research. It, it has expanded to everything, history. Um, so sociology, everybody is doing research in some aspect. So our office now supports every opportunity in those disciplines. Um, and our office started in 2014 based on some of those beginnings with our NSF and our UCUP funding, um, originally in STEM, as I mentioned. Um, but our office has grown quite a bit. Um, and as I'm talking about some of this, I'll also have some expansion of where we're looking at next. So to get into a little bit more about us, um, this program's link on our website has a pretty good diagram of the overview of the different programs that we offer. And again, this is specific to our UROC office, but we have specific funding for students. This does not include academic year, um, as well as non uc said programs that we also support our students applying to. Um, as the students come into uc said and starting their path, um, we encourage them to start thinking about research right away. That does not mean that they're going to start research right away, but we want them to start thinking about it, particularly as they get into their discipline. Um, you know, being familiar with the professors, we highly encourage them to start talking about research and what those faculty are doing. Where we are a research university, and it's important for the students to understand that context. Um, so during orientation, they get a lot of messages um, throughout their first year in the residence halls, they get messages about this. And even in their disciplines, faculty are really pushing for students to really understand the research at a research institution, institution campuses. So this path to research helps them thinking about it. Most students are new to research. They haven't had it. Um, they aren't really exposed to what even grad school is. Um, and we relate to that. As I've started um, in undergrad, I didn't even know about grad school. I didn't know what research was. Um, and so we come into the meetings of students with that context that they might not know the questions to ask. Um, so you all have some reassurance as you're talking to students about coming to UCMR said, there is staff that is familiar with that. And myself as a first gen, um, understanding that there's a lot of barriers there and our office is really trying to support students to overcome those and navigate these challenging experiences. As they start with research, um, there are a couple of programs that uh, are really focused on the entry and that's this new to research. Um, we call them entry programs because it's gonna cover the foundations of what research is as well as how do they go to the next steps. Um, you'll see that the, there are also two programs that offer beyond that. And so students that have previous research experience, either through our programs or something else, um, have the opportunity to continue that development in other areas. This is also based on their discipline. Um, and as I mentioned, like we do support students that are in our School of Social Sciences, Humanities and Arts. Um, one, two areas that, that kind of overlaps with our STEM programs is public health, as well as uh, cognitive science where depending on the research interests might end up going more on the STEM side um, or the STEM kind of pathway for them. Um, cognitive science can tend to be in neuroscience or biology, um, biochemistry. And so depending on the student's major, they might be kind of pushed into one of these directions and then we might like say, oh, actually you're more in this other area. So in terms of the programs, this gives you an overview. Um, all of our programs uh, provide a stipend for students um, to conduct research. Um, as I mentioned, this is during the summer that they are focused in, during our institute for nine weeks, where we provide professional development opportunities, some networking. Um, so beyond the research skill development, we also include some preparation for life skills, um, career planning, thinking about grad school, how do they apply, um, and then taking their research experience, particularly that first time, if it was not what they're expecting or they maybe didn't like it, why didn't they like it? What could be improved upon in the future? And hopefully hopefully foraying that first experience into future um, research experience. Um, and then uh, the other thing to think about as we're trying to really market this to students is that um, not all students are gonna really like research and we're okay with that. 
Um, we know that grad school isn't going to be for everyone, particularly PhD isn't going to be for all students. Um, but research is going to help them get some better um, grounding in that, making that decision for their next steps after they leave UC Merced. Um, and that's the selling point for you for our campus. Um, we don't have a lot of graduate students, um, and we don't anticipate having a lot to do that work with faculty. Um, so a lot of the opportunities end up going to our undergraduate students, which is fantastic. We've had students that are conducting research that typically wouldn't happen until their first or even second year in graduate school. So I'll just talk really briefly. I'm not going to cover in depth about each of the programs, um, but just to give you an idea, um, the students come into our programs and the application process is really focused on graduate school. As I mentioned, like that's our main, main goal. Um, so everything that we do, a letter of rec, personal statements, um, and an interview process, everything is based off the graduate school experience to so start prepping them for that. So even as even before they're entered into our programs and accepted, we start having these conversations about um, what typically happens in a graduate school admissions process. And what we are hoping to do is get them some foundation already. Um, maybe we only require one letter of recommendation for the majority of our programs. And so that helps them already get the idea that they need to start developing those relationships with professors. Again, intentional work um, and our faculty are aware of it. They're more supportive and aware that students are gonna be requesting letters of recommendation throughout this process, but we hope that having the initial conversations is gonna build up that capacity and make it easier for them to ask for letters of record in the future. But all of our programs have the similar kind of timeline, the same foundation with, uh, or the same fellowship funding. Um, we pay them $3,500 for the summer, which is a pretty nice stipend um, considering our cost of living in the Merced area is not super expensive. Um, but we also provide other supports um, in terms of like their housing on campus if they need it. Um, this past year we were virtual and we will likely be mostly virtual this summer. Um, some students will have access to on-campus research. And so I think that question has come up quite a bit about what do you do with virtual um, environments? And so one of the things that I, I wanna make clear is that they will get support for research, whether they are virtual and remote, maybe they're not living in Merced and are not on campus during the summer, faculty are still wanting to have um, some opportunities for them. Um, and that goes beyond even this summer. In the future, I think there's gonna be more support for this hybrid version of some of our uh, opportunities. Um, so some students might be doing lit reviews, data analysis, some things that don't require them to be in person, uh, but other disciplines, they're gonna be required to be in person um, to make sure that they're getting that experience to prepare them for within the discipline uh, futures in grad school. So all of these have our timeline information about each of the programs. Um, I'll let you all click through those if you have questions about specific programs you can definitely ask later. Um, one of the things I wanna also share with you all, um, we have this path to research um, information and we start breaking down by year what students are supposed to be doing and how to prepare for not just our programs, but for research in general. Um, there's a lot of information. We try to get information out to our students as much as possible through our clubs and orgs, um, as well as our academic advisors. We send information in schools to make sure that you know, they're getting the same messages to students and encouraging them to think about research, um, even if they feel like they're not prepared. Um, and we've updated a lot of our language to make sure that we're being inclusive of transfer students. We haven't had a lot in the past. We're getting more interest from transfers, especially in that first semester. Um, so that message is getting shared, thankfully. Um, and then we also have links to other opportunities and information that they could potentially be doing research at other institutions, um, in industry, government agencies. Um, so we really encourage students to think not just about their first summer with us, but the entire process and what can help them prepare for their future career goals. I will say that we are really focused on PhD. We don't talk about professional schools. Um, that happens in other disciplines and other programs on campus. We mention it more in like deciding between going into industry versus grad school and also between master's and PhD. Um, but we don't cover MCATs if students are thinking about um, going to med school, and we don't talk about like LSATs if people are going to plan for law school. Um, our conversations are more about where do we, where do they fall in between and how do we help them make those decisions. And then there was a question about study abroad program over the summer. Um, we have not supported them. We usually have them in person. I think in the future with that virtual hybrid, um, there will be more support for it. We haven't accepted summer abroad students just because we want them to get 
um, a lot of our graduate school preparation in collaboration at the same time that they're doing the research. And we do require a lot of our students to participate in Surrey. Um, so just wanted to make sure you all hear that. Um, we encourage students to do abroad, but we might be then putting them in an opportunity that's at that institution that we're in the country that they're visiting um, for this summer and we won't likely accept them into our program. Uh, we did have that request once and we said, when you come back, be in um, um, contact with us and we can help you find opportunities. We've done that with some of our Fulbright applicants as well, uh, thinking about research specific opportunities and not just um, um, like an industry or government position, but that there are opportunities to go abroad and do research at another institution. So currently no, but we will be talking about that in the future because we will be in a hybrid or um, a virtual experience for students. So mix of that. Okay, um, so that's it with this perspective students. Um, we have links to why it's beneficial for students. We've seen increased graduation rates, confidence in your academic discipline. Um, there's definitely this heightened awareness of future opportunities. And as I mentioned, we're giving them this real world experience of what they might go through in grad school. And if it's not for them, it helps them make a stronger decision for their next career steps. So the students that said, you know, maybe research wasn't for me, I didn't really like this. Um, they, are, they leave us more confident in whatever the next step is, um, which we are very proud of that because they're getting this hands-on experience, they can make better decisions for the next steps, even if it's not research, which we want it to be, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities for students beyond the research experience. And we found that that does help them um, make those decisions. I wanted to cover a little bit about our current scholars. Um, we have accepted a lot of students over the years. And for the majority of them, we don't have an exact percentage. We're still working on our data. But for a large percentage of, percentage of them, um, they have gone on to careers in academia, um, very solid careers in industry. Um, as we started in STEM, a lot of the students were considering um, what they want to do next. And we see the benefit of them coming through our office, really focusing on graduate school preparation. Um, so we break it down for them with academic years, some of the like summer opportunities. Um, beyond the research experience, we also help students get conference attendance. So applying and attending to present the research at an academic research conference, um, a research meeting, academic meeting, changes that perception for them, particularly for our first gen students um, who might not have seen themselves in that role. Um, we've seen an increase in their confidence level as well as them feeling like an academic they've changed that research mindset and feel like they can then go into that next step. Um, so beyond the summer, there's conference attendance. We do um, a series of workshops that are uh, geared towards the graduate school application process, um, really focusing on like the going in depth from our summer workshops, which are more general, to like, all right, now you have to get three letters of rec. Where are you with that process? How can we help you? Um, you have to submit a letter or a statement of purpose Let's take that draft that you've worked on during the summer. Let's make that a final draft for the campuses and programs that you're applying to specifically. Uh, so again, we, we scaffold this to give them some introduction at the beginning, the context to the interview process and application, thinking about grad school, and then hopefully later thinking the more um, focused, I guess, next steps and specifics. What does that actually look like? And let's help you get that context. Um, which we've heard from our students that they are really appreciative of because they have a lot of questions throughout the process and there's not really a structure for them to ask those questions to somebody and our office is providing that. If you have questions about like other opportunities and things that we follow along, um, I do wanna then talk about my staff a little bit and also about Surrey. Um, so we have coordinator, two coordinators in our office. One is specifically for STEM students, the other is for Shaw. Um, all of us have connections to programming or our own experiences based on this. Um, so a lot of our conversations with students is talking from our own background. Um, Emily and Cecilia were alum from UC Merced. Um, Cecilia specifically was also a UROC scholar in our programs. Um, and then Valerie came from uh, an educational uh, program um, or experience in her previous institution at UC Santa Cruz working for an education program supporting first gen low income students. Um, and so we have a very um, 
I guess, qualified staff to really help students throughout that process. Um, one of the things I also want to mention with this, and I'll briefly cover this, the philosophical perspective of like imposter syndrome, them thinking about graduate school, we see it a lot with our first gen students, um, but all students at Eastern Merced are hearing messages that they can go to that next step and they're hearing it from the peers. They're definitely starting to hear it from more alumni who are now going out in industry and getting jobs and um, going to graduate school. Um, so the data is showing that the students are hearing these messages. We have seen where they've come in not being completely sure about it. And I think that's where we're trying to work on some messaging about the access to research um, and the other opportunities beyond my office. So we're having a lot of conversations across the system. What this really means for students to have an undergraduate research experience as an undergraduate versus a grad student. The larger context national and internationally is that this is considered a high impact practice. We know that undergraduate research contributes to them making better decisions when they leave. UC Merced has a great opportunity because we know our student population does need that um, support to continue on. Beyond that, I think it's also important for us to share that message that even before they get here, they can start looking at research and thinking about what they learned in their um, high school classes. If they were interested in a biology project or chemistry lab, or if they had to do an article review for their English class, that passion and excitement can continue on. And we hope that they challenge what they're learning in the undergraduate experience courses. Um, and so I'm going to Jump on my soapbox, but I just wanted to also point out that there is a lot of conversation happening about what the student success um, and what our outcomes are for students at the undergraduate experience. And that be that goes beyond my division of undergrad education. Um, our new uh, vice provost and dean, Sarah, that's on this page, um, is trying to bring the other entities together to talk about what that really means for students. Um, and undergraduate research is a, hard, a huge part of that. Um, our provost has shared it. Um, and so we're hoping that that message continues and gets shared out. So I'm gonna jump on my soapbox um, and talk about the Surrey experience just briefly before I um, go on to the last part of my presentation. Um, so our students participate in Surrey, which is our Summer Undergraduate Research Institute. It's nine weeks during the summer where, as I mentioned, it's very targeted to um, preparation for grad school. But in this, there are a lot of opportunities to discuss other things. Um, so every week we have these overview topics um, and that's where um, we cover some of the logistics, the basics. There's multiple workshops every week as well as assignments for them to reflect on what that experience is and where they might be filling some, um, like some gaps in their information and knowledge. There are several workshops as I mentioned. One of those is hosted by staff on campus or even faculty. Then we have a separate workshop that's by graduate students who are current UC Merced grads um, in PhD programs to help them really think beyond that and give them more context of their own experience. Um, a lot of the grad students are thinking about becoming professors, so it's also helpful and developmental for them um, to prepare and how do you mentor undergraduates in research. Um, and then we end the summer with a symposium. Um, this virtual environment has challenged us a little bit, but we were successful last year in creating opportunities for students to present their research to a broader audience. Um, all students in our programs are required to present a research project at the end of the summer. Um, and that's through an oral presentation, a poster, or even written now with an oral, um, or a, sorry, a written document, so a research paper. Uh, and I will say that the students are finding that leads to then as I mentioned, conference attendance or even submitting manuscripts before they even graduate from undergrad. It's not as common um, and definitely not in all disciplines, but having something that's already familiar to them that it doesn't seem like it's unattainable after they finish at UC Merced, they feel confident about public publishing. They know the process. They understand the numbers, number, the numerous drafts of a manuscript that they have to go through and have a conversation with professors, with their, you know, academic advisors. In grad school, they'll have that with their faculty advisors. So it's really important for us to really model that for them and thinking next steps. We don't require them to submit a manuscript. It's hard for them to publish after nine weeks of research. It's not a huge timeline. Um, the students that are getting a manuscript in draft form before they finish the summer likely were coming from an academic year research with their mentor um, and continuing that into the summer. The students that we were able to target and 
their second year at UC Merced or even their first semester as a transfer, they continue with research. Um, we have programs, as I mentioned, that could give them that advanced experience. That's when they would also be working on some of that advanced level um, work. And so not all students are getting that, but it definitely helps them with their grad apps and also their um, industry positions. So having that helps them with that next step. So these are the like the overarching topics that we cover during the summer. These are other programs that we've linked to. Um, we're not the only research program at East Merced, but most stuff comes through our office. Um, we're trying to be as aware of all opportunities for students. So if maybe they're not fitting with our program requirements or expectations. We can forward them to other opportunities and also applying to other institutions. Um, research experience for undergraduates, which are called REUs for short, that are hosted through NSF, the National Science Foundation, have opportunities across the country. Um, students can conduct research in the, during the summer somewhere else. Maybe we don't have the topic at East Merced they're interested in. Um, you know, maybe they're very interested in aeronautics or even aerospace engineering. There's some research happening, but maybe it might not be as specific, but that might be happening at another institution and we will help them get those opportunities and point them in direction for those. Um, so beyond what I can offer, we will help students find what their interests are um, and be competitive for them. You know, we'll cover the same expectations for our programs and helping them apply for those others. And hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> that they come back and share that with other students and get them into those um, opportunities as well and broaden that pipeline. I'll go back to our homepage briefly. Um, what we want to also uh, mention is that for students that are not familiar with faculty on campus, we tell them at the very beginning in one of those first pages was becoming familiar with faculty and what faculty are doing, which isn't easy. Um, even on our websites, there's not clearly defined pages for like how to find faculty. So we usually send them to the graduate division uh, website which has them by discipline, um, which is usually helpful. Um, so I'll show you briefly what that looks like. So on the graduate division website, if you click on our programs, it comes to this page, academics and research, and you'll see them by discipline for graduate division or graduate programs. Um, and so with this, it usually helps students find faculty a little more easily. They have also updated all of their websites to have interactive uh, portfolio type things. Um, but all the faculty are listed for the programs, even if they're affiliate faculty for a, a graduate, graduate group. Um, and this is where the students can find a little bit of information, but usually links to their um, group or lab research site, which is really helpful for the students to find information and context for what the faculty are doing. This, these separate websites usually have their publications, uh, usually has some of their current research projects, or even some current students that are working in the labs or groups, which also helps the networking. We tell our students that a great source of information is your peers. It's not always welcomed, but <laughs> um, if they can make that connection either through class or even contacting them um, on social media, it helps the students find out, you know, maybe there's a grad or student graduating and the faculty is going to be looking for a space to fill um, or to fill a space with a new student. That happens pretty often. Um, so before students even ask us or apply to our programs, um, they might be able to get in um, without even you know, going through our process. I have one more thing I'm gonna talk about. Um, our social media is also where we've really had a lot of information from students, uh, particularly new students message us. Um, so this is our Instagram. We also have Facebook. We saw a lot more traffic coming through our Instagram. This is where we'll post updates, information, um, and even highlight scholars. We've had to take a little bit of a break from some of that just because of the workload during this remote environment. Uh, but we have a lot of opportunities to share information here. Um, as things come up, we usually share it through our social media. And so if you have students that are like looking for research, or even you all are interested in staying up to date with what's happening in the community, um, there are gonna be a couple of updates soon about our research week, which will happen the first week of March. Um, there are events that are going to be open to the public um, that we hope that you know everyone can share that. Um, finding more, finding out more about research at UC Merced as well as in the community. There's some projects that are happening in Madera, Fresno, um, Livingston, um, and then again, like 
trying to push that this is not just for UC Merced. Like we want to involve the community. We want to get engaged outside of you know where we are on campus. Um, but we hope that the students take what we're teaching them and giving back to the community. Uh, so there will be some upcoming events that will be highlighted probably this afternoon. We just finished some flyers. Um, so those will be added to our Instagram soon. Um, so yeah, that's basic overall of UROC. Um, I did want to save a lot of time for questions because I've probably covered information where there might be specifics that you're looking for. Um, so uh, Ricky, if you could jump back in and kind of transition us into Q&A. Hi, absolutely. Thanks so much, Jorge, for the great presentation. So it looks like we've actually been doing a really great job behind the scenes answering those incoming questions. So I don't see any that are listed as of right now. Um, do you have some contact information that perhaps you can share with the audience and then they have additional questions later on that come to mind, they can reach out to you directly? Um, yeah, oh, I think we took the emails off. Um, so, sorry, this is the page. Um, under the About Us tab on our website and then under Office Hours, it has our contact information. So this is all of our email address. Email's best, particularly right now. Not all of our phones are forwarding to us on a regular basis. If you leave me a voicemail, I'll get a notification and I can call you back. Uh, but email is definitely the best uh, form of communication for our staff. Um, you can contact me directly for a lot of the things. Um, if there's more specific stuff um, that we can forward, um, I would do that. Um, to the specific coordinators. This is the other opportunity that we have. So students can sign up for meetings individually with us if they did have um, specific questions. Um, so they can directly schedule contact or meetings on our calendar. So if anyone has a specific question, you can click on the Q&A button. Should be around the lower portion of your screen. You just click on that button and type in your question, and then we will moderate those over to Jorge so he can address those. So if anyone does have any questions that haven't yet been answered behind the scenes by our admissions assistants, uh, Kia and Iona today, then go ahead and submit those now, and we will hold for just a moment to see if we have any additional questions coming in. It looks like the main question that did come in was just the contact information. So if they had additional questions later on, how they could reach you. What I can also share with the audience right now while we wait for those incoming questions, we do have additional events that are coming up, constantly updating our events calendar. You can locate those on the admissions website here at UC Merced, and that website is admissions.ucmerced.edu. You will locate an events uh, link up at the top of that page and you can click on that and there are various events coming up additional educator tour series events such as this one uh, throughout the month of February and then we also have additional that will be added as time goes on so definitely take a look there if you have additional uh, interest in other events that are coming up we are always here to answer your questions and trying to do our very best to provide that information in the virtual setting until we're able to join you back on campus. So Jorge, did you have anything additional that you'd like to add before we wrap up our event? Um, I think the last thing was clarifying. So um, I forgot about this. All of my programs or our programs in UROC are specific to UC Merced students. Um, so students have to be enrolled at UC Merced. Um, typically we want them to be continuing students. So say during their fourth year and they're graduating that spring, um, we would consider them, but likely that we'd be pushing them to an opportunity that's for students after they graduate. Um, unless they are staying for that fall semester. Because I have gotten requests in the past for students that are at other institutions, um, Fresno State, even Stanislaus, and I have to tell them it's for UC Merced specific students. The other programs that we have listed on our website, um, so the non-UROC partner programs are open to students that are not from UC Merced, but all of my funding is very tied to their enrollment. Um, so unfortunately I can't offer it for students that are not at UC Merced. Um, and then other questions that have come up, if students have questions or even if you all, we have an FAQ um, on our website that answers a lot of questions for students typically. Um, and so some of your questions might also be answered there, but feel free to email me if you have other stuff that you want me to clarify. Um, and definitely I can offer more information in the future. Um, but I think that's it for me. Great. Once again, a big thank you to Jorge for the wonderful presentation and Q&A. And also a huge thank you to everyone in attendance and our friends that were behind the scenes from the admissions office of helping us answer those behind the scenes questions.
Once again, just a quick reminder for additional upcoming events, you can find those at admissions.ucmerced.edu. Just click on the events link at the top of the screen and you will see everything that we do have upcoming. We will also be providing a recording of this session as well as any others that we have. And you will find those actually on the educator tours page, which again, you can find through that link admissions.ucmerced.edu and clicking on the events link at the top of the screen. Once again, my name is Ricky Hill. A big thank you to Jorge and everyone in attendance today. And we hope to see you again in a future event on behalf of the University of California and all of my colleagues today. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day.